Well, thank you very much for inviting me out to be your commencement speaker. It is an honor and an extreme privilege. I'm extremely grateful for the invitation. And it's a really special, special time for me, too, because it's been 10 years since I was sitting in your seat, since I graduated from Kakana High. Actually, I was sitting in that seat right back there. So you, you are destined for greatness. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Everyone here, all of you, are destined for greatness. You have an amazing foundation. You're graduating from Kakana High School. So since then, I've gone through a lot of battles, I've had a lot of failures, and I want to share that with you. So you might know me just as Kevin, the NASA rocket scientist, or that guy you see on American Ninja Warrior, or hey, that's the hometown kid living the California dream. But I want to give you a little look into the 10-year journey behind the scenes in the next two minutes of what it took to actually get to where I'm at today. So 10 years ago, I graduated from Kakana High School, went on to the University of Wisconsin Platteville for engineering, and I wanted to work for NASA. I wanted to do an internship. So it took me three years and over 150 applications before I got my first NASA internship. And throughout that time, it wasn't like I was receiving rejection letters. There was just radio silence, leaving me in limbo the whole time, not knowing if I was going to get a call. But I got one. So perseverance pays off. After that, I decided I wanted to go to Georgia Tech for grad school. It's the only lab in the country that does what it does in terms of complex systems of systems engineering. So I spent countless hours putting together my application only to receive a rejection letter from Georgia Tech. I was like, man, it's the only place I want to go. How do I get in? So emailing back and forth with the Dean of Admissions, eventually I got accepted. And not only did I get accepted, I was given a full ride scholarship and a stipend to do research at the lab. So I got rejected from Georgia Tech to getting paid to go to school. It's kind of cool. After that, I set my sights on NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. We are the ones who do the robotic exploration. Going out, we have the rovers on Mars, the spacecrafts out at Jupiter, Saturn, and even out of our solar system. Now, JPL put me through three rounds of interviews. And the third one being an eight-hour interview on lab in California, where I was having one-on-two, one-on-one interviews, a presentation to a panel with a Q&A afterwards, some really grilling and hostile environments, and to only get a call a month later to say I wasn't given the job. Now, JPL is the only place I wanted to work. Graduation was two, two months away. What was I going to do? So I decided to graduate without a full-time job. I took a risk. I was like, I'm going to my, get myself a 10-week internship to go out there to prove to them that I belong, to show them that they cannot live without me. And, and if I screw up, I'll just become a beach bum. It's like, okay. So while I'm there, the first five weeks, I just really worked hard. I put in that time, the effort, the sacrifice to show my work ethic, to show what I was capable of. And in the last five weeks, I went around and I knocked on doors. And I set up over 30 interviews for myself in those five final weeks to try and get hired on as a full-time employee. Only until the last day of my internship, where I was getting ready to pack up things, move back home with my mom and figure out what plan B was going to be, I got a call that said I was going to be receiving a full-time job. Not only did I get a full-time job, I was then offered a position on the most advanced mission that NASA is working on right now called the Europa Lander concept. Europa is the moon of Jupiter. It has the most potential for life in our solar system outside of Earth. So we're going to go out there and see if we can look for the signs of life. So just to recap that really quick, 150 applications till the first NASA internship. Georgia Tech rejected me and then paid me to go to school. NASA didn't give me a job, and now I'm working on the most advanced mission that they have. Now, I share this story with you not to tell you how hard it is to get into NASA. Some people have it a lot easier than me. Some people have it a lot easier to achieve their dreams. But I want to share this with you to show you that it's not impossible. If you truly are passionate about it, if you believe in yourself, if you're willing to put in the hard work, the sacrifice, the dedication, that nothing is impossible, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. And I believe that the reason I was able to do all of that is because I got my start right here, right where you guys are, sitting in these seats about to walk across the stage and get my diploma from Kakana High School. Kakana did so many things for me. The things that stick out in my mind is my best friends I went to high school with. 
my buddy Dan and Brandon, co-captains on the soccer team going to state. Dan's getting married in October, I'm standing up in his wedding. Brandon just got engaged and is getting married next year and I'll be in his wedding as well. So the friendships that you have here in Kakana High School, they can last a lifetime. Hold on to them. You guys have been through high school together, some of the roughest years that you've been through. It's an amazing accomplishment and stick together. The other thing is the teachers here. They support you. You're not just a name in a grade book with test scores next to it along the columns. They want you to grow as an individual. They want to find out what is your learning style. How can they adapt the classroom to reach every single one of you? They want to know what's it like outside of the classroom. How are you doing in sports, extra, extracurriculars, jobs, family, home? What are your plans for the future? Where have you come from? Where are you going? The teachers really support you and they want you there. If you're not in class or you're sick, they say, hey, how are you feeling? Or where have you been? They're really here to build you up together and not just out here to get A's and B's and get good grades. The other thing that we have here at Skakana is we're a community. We are one large family. You've seen it countless times that when we're in times of need, Kakana rallies together school and community to support each other. And in the great times when we're happy and celebrating, we come together just as strong. And that is what the definition of Kakana Strong is. I looked up Kakana Strong and I found out that the term was coined in 2014. So just four years ago when you guys were freshmen. freshmen. But I can tell you that back in 2004, when I started high school, it was there. We may have not had the term coined, Kakana Strong, but the mindset, the attitude, it was there. I felt that community support as, long as, as well as everybody else I was with. And that still hangs with me today. I'm out in California and people ask me a lot. They're like, where do you come from? How are you like this kind of person? I probably stand up and say, I'm from Kakana. And they're like, where is that, Hawaii? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, it's in Wisconsin, just south of Green Bay and Appleton. We have cheese in your stores everywhere. Like, all the stores in California have Kakana cheese. Port wine, it's awesome. <laughs> but that's what Kakana did for me. And it's enabled me to go even further and beyond NASA into American Ninja Warrior and science education, where I'm teaching the youth about science, getting them excited and, and inspired to pursue degrees in STEAM. So a couple months ago, I was working an event at, as an American Ninja Warrior at a high school, and I had one of the seniors come up to me, and he asked me, Kevin, he's like, if you could go back to yourself in high school right now, what would you tell yourself? I was like, ooh, this is a good one. I got to make sure like, I, I hit this one on the head for this guy. So I thought about it a little bit, and I told him three things. The first one is I said work ethic. I want to emphasize work ethic. Not saying I didn't have any when I was in high school, but I would say it is really important to delay gratification, to put in the effort, to persevere, to push through, and that it's all worth it. You want to establish good work ethic. The second one would be don't sweat the small stuff. There may be things now that might seem like the end of the world to you, but look on the bright side, look on the positives. I like to say you either win or you learn. You never lose. Always take something positive away from every situation that you're in. And the third one is, we're living in the digital age. Everyone's got Instagram, social media, right? The flashy things, they don't matter. The nice car, the big house, the designer clothes, the brand name handbags. None of that matters. None of it matters. It's all a facade. What truly matters is the mark that you can make on your community and on the individuals in your life. That's what's really important. I listen to this podcast called The School of Greatness. And in this podcast, the host asks his guests a question called the three truths. So these three truths, if it's at the end of your days, long, long time from now, everything you've ever created, everything you've ever made, written down, it's gone, it's vanished, disappears. But you're left with a paper and pen. And you can write down three things that are known to be true about this world from you and your experiences. What are the three things you would write down? So I've been listening to this podcast for almost two years. I've had a lot of time to think about, if I was on this podcast, it'd be pretty cool. 
what would my answer be to this question? So my first one, my first truth, is that time is our most precious resource. You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. We all have the same 24 hours in the day, and it's a matter of priorities. So next time you think you're running short on time, and you say, I don't have enough time, try saying, I don't make that a priority, and see how that feels. The second one is that respect is the most valuable thing you can earn, but the most expensive thing that you can lose. And the third one is to be grateful and to be a kind person. Please and thank you are still magic words, no matter how old you get. You can get more with a smile and a nice attitude than you can with money any day. So congratulations, class of 2018. I'm very proud of each and every one of you for where you guys are going. You have a solid foundation here coming from Kakana High School. Bring that Kakana strong with you wherever you go. If you stay here, you're engulfed in the community. If you go elsewhere, bring Kakana strong into those communities and make those communities Kakana strong. Bring it all over the place. You guys have the ability to go wherever you want, to do whatever you want to do, and to become successful. Whatever the word success means for you, you guys have a solid foundation to go and achieve that. So once again, congratulations. I'm very proud of each and every one of you.